everyone and welcome back to the United Stamp Russia and I've got Atanu with me and we're going to talk about Euro 2020 which is happening in 2021 uh Manchester United players are having an absolute ball at the Euros not to forget the Copa America is on as well uh certain players doing quite well there winning man of the matches that they've never won for United before but uh, Atanu let's get straight into it let's talk about a team that refused to give any Manchester United players a decent run England uh Rashford came on for about 11 to 12 minutes i think that was because of injury concerns mainly i don't think uh, they wanted to risk him harry maguire of course is yet recovering and did not start against croatia dean henderson is gone uh, he's injured his hip apparently and he's come back to wherever he is and finally luke shaw what do you think katanu playing kiran trippier on the left instead of playing luke shaw who's in the form of his life I think uh, let's start with Marcus Rashford. I think if uh, Raheem Sterling, other than that goal that he scored, I think he had a very bad game. And if uh, Raheem, if Gareth Southgate actually wanted to start Raheem Sterling on the left wing, then he could have gone with a Jack Grealish or a Marcus Rashford who are actually better than him in that position, and obviously had a better season than him. So I think Marcus Rashford could have started over Raheem Sterling. And moving on to Luke Shaw, I think. uh gareth southgate uh has really bottled it there that he has carried four he carried four right backs and then trent had to back off due to injury and now the, he has three left backs uh, he's three right backs and two left backs and then he doesn't play the two left backs who one of whom have actually won the uefa champions league ben chilwell and the other one luke shaw is the best left back in england right now so i think not starting either of them and starting trippier over them was actually illegal or a criminal act i think <laughs> so i think uh gareth southgate actually doesn't know how to field a perfect 11 when he has you know players. you know atanu in in london there are these secret uh, gardens and secret screenings and secret beer gardens and things like that gareth southgate is a secret mastermind you don't know he's there he's doing something that you and i don't understand you say that there are two left backs if i'm being honest Bakayo Saka is essentially you could say is the closest thing he could have even played him at left back but the man's <laughs> played Kieran Trippier so i think the less spoken about southgate and the this is nothing is. against Kieran Trippier he is a fantastic player and you know united are actively looking for him and we also want him at our club but i think let's stick him at right back position only let let's not indulge him in the left back position for england so i think as a united fan watching him at left back was quite good cuz alex telles is obviously rubbish so if kiran trippier can fill in two positions i, I don't think it's the worst thing to have happened to us but uh, let's move on uh, let's move on to one of our man of the match performances and uh, that happens to be the magnificent victor lindelof uh, who happened to have an absolutely stellar game and they kept a clean sheet they kept a clean sheet when no one expected them to how did you rate lindelof's performance he was clearing balls in the air he was cutting the channels uh, what what got into lindelof i think every united player when he they are not playing for the club have actually you know an amazing performance for their respective countries and lindelof was one of them that day and i think the clean sheet really meant a lot to lindelof and it's a fantastic performance that's all i can say and you know uh, talking about sweden there's this striker called alexander isak so if right. united actually want a striker and you know actually want a forward and let's say we don't get harry kane which prasham would obviously be very disheartened <laughs> to hear <laughs> so prasham what do you think about alexander isak no i think isak is a fantastic player and if you look at his statistics he played for obviously sociedad and uh, we did beat them but he got i think 17 goals in the in la liga this season which is no mean feat and he was absolutely destroying the spanish defense the other day and this spanish defense has got pau torres whom everyone is rating so highly and mini clapot who again everyone rates quite highly and he was absolutely destroying them and shredding them to pieces so i think this guy is a young player of course and we can look into him if we don't get any of your, our uh, you know first choice strikers that of course is harry kane or erling haaland alexander isaac 21 years old i think he's perfectly worth a gamble and we should really look into this player and i think he can learn a lot from kavani and be that support for kavani as well he's powerful he's strong he can dribble he can hold the ball up i think he's a great player 
But and uh, I think uh, he has a fellow countryman as well in forward position by the name of Anthony Elanga. So that would yeah. be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, and of course, uh, the 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 greatest uh, Swede or the greatest footballer of, of all time has also played for Manchester United. So maybe he can convince them to join. Yeah. But uh, uh, but you know, moving on, let's move to uh, another potential signing that we're always linked with every season. Uh, decent player, Cristiano Ronaldo, but uh, we're not going to talk about him. Uh, we're going to talk about Bruno Fernandes. Uh, yeah. Let me ask you this, Atanu: How weird was it to watch a match where Bruno is playing and he's not doing everything? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, this is what I want next season at your Manchester United. You know, not the full workload on Bruno, and it's actually you know equally distributed among the forward line and the midfield. And I think Bruno Fernandez and Cristiano Ronaldo actually, you know, that link up was pretty special. And I think uh, that was a, just a teaser for United fans. And I and I know that you also want him at United next season. So let's see what happens there. I mean, I think Cristiano Ronaldo at Manchester United. The rumors began the moment he left. But uh, you know, Bruno put in a couple of good passes, had a good shot. He was playing that you know Luka Modric sort of role where he's not really visible for the entire game, but he's sort of dictating the tempo with one touch, two touch passes, driving the ball when needed, giving space, much deeper, more withdrawn, and driving with the ball. And like you rightly said, I mean, apart from the fact that he was complaining to the referee from minute one. There was nothing about the Bruno Fernandes performance that we're used to seeing at Manchester United, which shows his versatility as a player. And I and think if Diogo Jota was a bit more clinical, Bruno Fernandes would have got uh, a couple of assists, maybe in the first. Well, half. if if Ronaldo was a bit more clinical, he might have got an assist as well. I don't know if that back heel had a touch on it or what happened, but from two yards for him to miss from there it was shocking. But uh, let's also uh, remind our viewers that uh, unfortunately, Juan Cancelo has got. Uh, covid and is out of the tournament and uh, the magnificent diego dalo has replaced him he's yet a player of our club and we're keeping a close eye on him when he gets his chance plays right back left back everywhere not good at anything but plays everywhere uh, but 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 from bruno i think the right transition to make will be to the french midfield maestro the man who turns into zidane plus scoles plus pirlo when he puts the france jersey on Paul Pogba, man of the match performance, and was popping passes like he was playing with uh, under 15s and some training ground exercise. Yeah, that pass, uh, which obviously turned into the Hummel's own goal, was fantastic. And I think that is the score. That is actually looking at an unlocked Pogba at France, and that is the unlocked Pogba I want at Manchester United, like you said. And what about that pass to Mbappe, which was ruled out obviously for being offside? It was just, I mean. Watching Paul Pogba was like watching a man at the peak of his powers. He could do anything he wanted with the ball, and you know, at times I felt like Jogba is going to turn up. Jogba is in the Pogba who keeps jogging around the pitch for United, but not once, man. Hustling, going for the ball, crossing it in, fighting with players. This is the Pogba we want to see at United, and this is why we don't want him to leave because the quality is there. It's just how we can channelize it into something special, and we all are waiting for that. But uh, let's move on to two uh, teams that I don't know why they compete under their own flag, but uh, Wales and Scotland. Uh, two, let's say one great player and one Scott McTominay. So let's talk about Dan James first. Uh, Dan James played both games, started both games. Uh, I think he put in a combined one good cross in in two games. No, no, it's actually like he put in a lot of crosses, but. The players of Wales weren't <laughs> actually, you know, uh, used to his crosses. But I think uh, in both the matches, he was one of the best players on the pitch. And after that first game, I saw this many uh, in many places on social media that if someone is watching Wales for the first time and they know that there is a four-time Champions League winner in that team, then people would think it's Daniel James and not Gareth Bale. <laughs> I think I think after watching that uh, penalty that uh, Gareth Bale teed off 80 yards for hole in one type penalty, I think uh, people would definitely put Dan James on the next penalty for him to quickly hit it into the bottom corner because speed is what James is all about. But there's something that you know, uh, there's something that I feel if Daniel James wasn't a Manchester United player right now. Then we would be all over, you know, on social media saying that okay, let's get him. He's an exciting prospect. And this is something like 
uh, the word familiarity breeds contempt <laughs> like we often you know, i i i don't know i saw i mean you you are saying he was one of the best players in the pitch i saw him play in those two games and i was just like yep here we go again pick up run cross and nothing pick up run cross and nothing pick up run cross and nothing and then one cross eventually will come good but in my opinion he's a very wasteful player he's got pace in him but that's about it and yeah he's not one of he is not the most intelligent player of the on the pitch i agree to that point <laughs> but yeah i mean he's a hard working player and i think for as a squad depth player as a squad player he's uh, he's perfect for manchester united you know maybe getting in those two three games when someone's someone's injured or in those cup games so i think the people who say that we should sell daniel james are wrong in my opinion i think he should stay no tanu what will you tell to the people who say that we should sell scott mctominay not no no scott mctominay is a good player and you know yeah obviously there are games that he doesn't perform but at the end of the day he is a good player um, i mean i want him in my team even if it even if he's not his, starting how did you rate his game the other day against the mighty czech republic team that beat uh, scotland <laughs> 2-0 it uh, i think scott mctominay played uh, the first half he was brilliant i think uh, if he would have gotten that uh, independence to go forward with the ball uh, scott scotland would have scored a goal but uh, the scottish manager pushed pushed him into the center back position in the second half and you know he's brilliant he's an attacking threat uh, while going forward but he often plays as a center back for scotland i don't know why so mm. i would say a 7.5 out of 10 or an 8 8 out of 10 nice nice so now let's move i think to what the final player i think is remaining oh well obviously david de gea did not start for spain uh, unai simon was in goal again and i don't understand that decision by luis enrique but it's been like this for a while and well to be honest i hope unai simon makes a mistake soon but uh, let's talk about uh, the the man uh, of the hour or another man of the match performance this time in the copa america uh, the anti brazilian fred the 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 comical genius that fred is what happened to him he is he's he's pulled off a man of the match performance with neymar on the pitch i think uh, you see scott mctominay also played well fred also played well and both of them had a cdm in their uh, had a cdm with them as a their teammate like uh, fred had casemiro i think as yeah, the yeah. cdm in that game and you know neymar after the game he actually said that i don't know if if, if that's true or not he said that uh, if fred wasn't playing we would have lost and i was like okay <laughs> that's that's a bit uh, that's a bit of an ex- exaggeration but okay fine but yeah fred played a good game he so guys was... you've heard it first time from atanu mctominay is good lindelof is good fred is good oli is the problem no 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no 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 oli is not the problem the whole uh, manchester united football club is the problem the board the players the manager all of them but but atanu let's uh, let, we've already spoken about alexander isaac and uh, we've spoken about all the united players i think that have participated in these international tournaments what is your sort of uh, belief that which united player is going to come out of this tournament looking the best or having the best performance I think Paul Pogba yeah I mean Paul Pogba obviously is one of our key players and I think he would have a fantastic season fantastic summer maybe lift uh, lift the euros uh, if Gareth Southgate commits a mistake and England don't win it uh, uh. <laughs> so let's see I think uh, Paul Pogba would be the best Manchester United player in this tournament of uh, maybe Bruno Fernandes as well um and i think after this summer paul pogba will be given a new contract at manchester united okay fantastic guys you've heard it from atanu uh, paul pogba is going to be the player of the euros for manchester united unless of course we sign harry kane then harry kane is going to be that player but uh, thanks for watching guys do subscribe it's just week 1 in the euros exciting time ahead exact exciting times ahead manchester united players are doing well which is good for the club some key players are getting rest as well which is good as well so let's see what happens keep watching this space for more content on the euros and manchester united and everything to do with football hit the subscribe button and we'll see you all soon thanks for watching